Hi guys, Pete Finch here and welcome now to the Quest for the Open and Vlog this week. And if you are new to the channel guys, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell icon as well, so you don't miss out on any of the content which is produced on this channel. And this week, I'm going to be focusing in on just one thing, and that is chipping and pitching. And the reason I'm doing that is because this week I've played in a competition and I've already released a video on that, so you've seen most of that action. But this game and this drill that I was using, I saw massive benefits to my performance when I was actually playing in the competition. So what I'm gonna do is break down this drill a little bit more, explain it in a bit more detail, and then hopefully you can implement this into your practice routine or just start practicing this drill because I'm pretty sure that if you do that, you are gonna be seeing good results. Now this drill is designed to help with different flights from the same wedge. So with this video, I was using the same wedge and I was just trying to get different flights by how I was creating my impact. Now for many, many years, I was someone who led pretty heavily with that leading edge. So hitting the ball, hitting the turf and almost taking a tiny little divot around the green on these short shots. Now over the last few years, as I've become a little bit more accustomed to how to play and how to use wedges better, I switched over to much more of a bounce led approach. Now just to talk you through that technique a little bit more, so before you actually embark on this practice session, it's always worthwhile to have a refresher of your technique. And if you're not using this type of technique, then I heavily recommend that you give it a go. So when I use the bounce on my wedges, what I'm trying to do is slide the club underneath the ball, getting the sole to interact with the turf a little bit more. If you don't know what the bounce on a wedge is, it is the difference between the leading edge and the bottom of the sole. Now, the more bounce you have, the bigger that difference will be. The less you have, the less the difference will be. But the whole point of this is when that wedge comes into impact, rather than the leading edge just digging in, the bounce will take over and it will help the wedge come out of the turf or out of the bunker. Now what this means for golfers is rather than just using the leading edge is they can get that bounce interacting with the turf and actually deliver a much more consistent impact. And that's what this drill is designed to do. It's just all about getting the flight right. So just as a quick refresher as the basic technique when using the bounce, I get set up with the ball position, first of all, in the middle of my stance, but this will alter as we talk through this drill. I get my hands pretty much level with my belt buckle just slightly to the left. So there is a tiny bit of shuffling. My weight is a little bit on my left side, not by low, 60%. And all I'm doing here is I'm turning my body back and through and I'm using my pivots rather than just using my hands. And this will help deliver that more consistent position into impact. It does take a little bit of time to get used to if you haven't done already. And please comment below, have you actually used the bounce on your wedges before in this way? Is this something you've given a go? And if not, please do. So I've set up four stations here, and on each of these stations, I've placed five balls. Now the balls that I've placed at these stations are a high quality golf ball, so they're cast off from my bag, the ones I've just collected over the last few years. Now that's important because you want to be practicing with balls which are very similar to what you'll be doing in competition or in play. If you use, say, I don't know, Pinnacle Golds, try and use Pinnacle Golds when practicing short game technique. If you use AD333s, do that. Pro Vs, do that. You get what I mean. Now on each of these four stations, five balls. I'm gonna be using the same wedge for each of these stations, and I have four wedges in my back. So what I would do is I would complete this drill with say my 60 degree wedge, and then once the drill's been completed, I will go onto my 54 degree wedge and complete the drill, all the way through the 46 degree. And the whole point of this drill is to get the ball finishing in the hole, hopefully, or within a club length of the hole. Now if you hit a shot and you don't manage to get it finishing within the club length, you take that ball and you return it to the station from which you missed. Now the whole point of this is let's say I go through these four stations and I hit two good shots, two bad shots. I'll return the two bad shots to their stations because that's obviously a part that I need to work on a little bit more. And what I did is I arrayed these stations around the green so they gave me a different landing point and a different shot. Now what I mean by that is the first station that I had in the rough, I had to actually get the ball flying quite high because of a little ridge that was in the green right where I was hitting towards the ball. Now what I mean by this is the first shot which was in the rough, I need to get the ball traveling quite high, landing on a specific point on the green and then running out to the hole. There was a little ridge right on the green where I was pitching so I had to carry it over that point. The next target was a little bit more further around so I could be a little bit more flatter with the ball flight. And then the next two targets, the next two stations should I say, 
they were a little bit simpler and I could actually get the ball flying a little bit lower and running a little bit more as well. Now when I changed to hitting that lower shot, I didn't change the club. I only changed my setup and I continued to use the bounce. The ball position went a little bit further back in my stance, so my hands went a little bit further ahead, but I was still using the bounce of the club coming through. Just because the ball goes back in the stance doesn't mean you need to start whacking down on it. Now what this drill does is it helps you focus on different flights. It helps you pick out a landing point on the green where you want the ball to pitch and then roll out to a tapping range. And if you don't manage to achieve that, then you've got to go back and you do not finish this drill until all the balls are gone from all the stations. So what this did, it combined my block practice, it combined competitive practice, and it put a lot of pressure on my shot because if it didn't work out, then I'm gonna be there for a hell of a long time. So this is what I want you to do, guys. Use this drill. Send me pictures, please do. Let me know how you get on with this particular shot and with this particular drill because it is something that I found this week and I practiced this last week as well. It's really improved my chipping and my pitching and it's something which I want you guys to have a go with and find success with as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give this a go. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on my other social media platforms as well and I will see you down here next time. I'm not sure where that outro is going, but it's gone.